what he's done is quite frankly ridiculous. He just has the right mentality to uh, achieve greatness. He's doing unbelievable things and that's always impressed me a lot. He's got all the key components to, to be you know, the greatest ever. I would love for my record to stay forever, but um, you just had to accept that the records are made to be broken and he's going to break it. The all-time Grand Slam record of Pete Sampras of 14. My aim is really to try to break that record. Absolutely. I don't want to just equal it. I want to try to break it. Sunrise over the London skyline. Dawn of a new era in tennis. When Roger Federer and Mark Philippoussis walked into the cauldron of centre court for their first Grand Slam final, at stake was the holy grail of tennis. Raised in the shadows of the Swiss mountains, Federer had spent his life fine-tuning his game for this moment. He was now ready to add his DNA to the bloodline of Wimbledon champions. I remember me being the favorite all of a sudden now in, in my first Grand Slam final against Philippe Pussis. I was like, that's strange, you know, now all of a sudden I'm the favorite and now I'm supposed to win and if I lose I'll be so disappointed I'll cry for days, you know. So these kind of things are going through my mind. Right from the beginning, the atmosphere was, was, was so great. And uh, uh, I mean, I just loved being on center court, being able to watch my son playing a final. And such a, you know, I knew how much Wimbledon meant to him. Came out and I played actually a good, good match with a couple of tiebreakers, which is always tough in slams. I was really pleased though the way I played and you know the moment when everything happens I remember I almost cried prior to the match point because I knew I'm about to win here because I think it was up five or six one in the tiebreaker I was like it's about to happen I'm gonna be Wimbledon champion and like oh no keep yourself together and I just hope just make an error just miss one ball please Mark just miss it okay so I don't have to hit a winner and uh, it happened, he missed a return, and yeah, obviously, most incredible feeling. <laughs> I was always joking around when I was a boy. <laughs> I'm gonna win this, and... <laughs> now I have it! That's huge. That's tremendous. And then the way he, he won that uh, Wimbledon was uh, the turning point in his career. Obviously, it took a lot of weight from his shoulders and uh, transformed him into the champion that he is. Je crois que c'était une manière de se dire et de se convaincre, oui, maintenant, je peux le faire. Well, I think winning your first Grand Slam is like winning your first title. It releases pressure and, you know, you don't... If the career, career stops right there with an injury or whatever it is, you're happy. You've won a slam, you know? I mean, this is what players are aiming for. At home, Federer became an instant national hero. Dealing with all the attention alongside his girlfriend, Mirka, would be a skill they would have to acquire quickly. Their way of doing that was simple. They would just be themselves. Winning Wimbledon looked like it would be the catalyst to greatness. The sky was now the limit. Australia has produced some of tennis's most endearing champions. At the 2004 Australian Open, victory would guarantee Federer the number one spot in the ATP rankings. 
Not even the formidable Marat Safin could stand in the way of that goal. I won the Australian Open and my second Grand Slam title and that was a big moment for me, becoming number one in the world uh, for the first time because you know, all my heroes were number one in the world. So I got my first and second Grand Slam title, but then on top of that I got number one in the world, which was un unbelievable. Since he has become the number one player in the world, I sense that he's grown into what the responsibility of the position demands. Not everyone lives up to that demand, but we have a, a, a great guy on our hands in that respect. Number one in the world, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a, a long process of hard work and uh, you have to own it too, you know. All right, one more. At Wimbledon, destiny dealt Federer a card that pitted him against the man he knocked off the number one spot just five months earlier. The powerful Andy Roddick was out for revenge. Roddick probably has never played better or more ferociously for a set and a half than he did in that final. And he threw it all at him. Huge surge. Probably never has hit the ball harder before or since, I don't think, than he did in that match. And uh, Roger, you could see him eyes a little bit wider than usual, which is a rare thing for him. I knew it would be a dangerous and difficult match from then on. At least, you know, I had a, a good reaction to it. Uh, luckily for me, I, I could turn it around and I think the reason why I won is because I really fought hard and stayed very calm. And you could see him absorb it with his game and then gradually just tightening the screws and, and reeling Andy in. And Roger's class just over time wore him down. And I think that was one of the better finals I've seen him play for that very reason. That match for me was, it was a really critical one for Roger's career that he won that after the opening onslaught. Roger just played, he just played too good today, uh, you know, I, I threw the kitchen sink at him, but he went to the bathroom and got his tub. <laughs> um. I started to just pour out all the talent I had, and uh, I finally could unlock all my potential. It was unbelievable, you know, the feeling I got after it. I got so confident, and with confidence you play better, and when you play better you get more results, and the whole thing was like this snowball effect. For me, that opened up the gate. Something clicks in you and you just start dominating, it becomes easier, it's not as complicated, it doesn't take as much energy out of you to play a great match. And I think it's it's a God-given talent. I think it's a will. He's so quick around the court, but that's one of the keys to his success. It's just great to watch him play. I think he's, uh, he's one of the best players to watch. His game is so complete. His forehand is, is as good as anyone's. And um, I think one of the, the deceptive aspects is, is his movement. I think a lot of that has come from the confidence that that breeds. is uh, consistency, you know, from day in and day out. Um, he just brings it each and every day. Uh, as much as tennis you know, players have to travel, they travel all over the place, uh, for him to be you know, that prepared um, each and every event is actually pretty phenomenal. I didn't enjoy that so much in the very beginning, so now praises are beautiful, I enjoy them, I like them. Sometimes I like them too much. My girlfriend has to stop me from looking and listening all to all the clips and reading all the articles about me, but that, that's okay. She, she, she thinks it's funny. <laughs>